Welcome back to Lady Trady. Today we are doing just a quick little tutorial on how to tile a splashback or even an entire wall if that's what you want to do, but some basic tips to get you started. Now the first tip is to tile from the middle of the wall out. So measure the total length of your wall, divide it by two, and then mark the center of the wall as I'm doing here. And then you can start with the tiles in that center position. You're going to work your way outwards, left and right from that center tile. So behind the tile, you use a tile adhesive. Now, if it's for walls, you can get a particular adhesive that is for walls. I've gone and bought a pre-made adhesive. You can mix it up yourself, kind of like making grout, but for just a splashback that's quite small, it's just as easy, in fact, much easier, to just go and grab a pre-mixed adhesive. So what you need is, as well is a, a tile trowel and this allows you to spread the adhesive to the wall properly. So what you want to do is get a blob of the adhesive, smooth it on the wall and then use the grooved side of the trowel. So I'm applying it to quite a long section of wall here. Um, remembering that I want to start tiling from the middle and then move my way out. So I'm going from the wall to the center point. I'm going to put on my first tile and then work my way back across that wall. As you can see, I'm also putting adhesive over the damaged area of wall. You can check out my other video, which shows you how to repair a big hole in the wall um, to see how to do that. But when you tile over these types of damaged areas, the tile will totally cover this and you won't even know that it's like that underneath. Just make sure that you really liberally apply some adhesive on top of it so that the tile connects not only to the the new section that you've added but also to the original plaster wall around the damaged section. You also want to apply some adhesive to the back of the tile in the same way that you did to the wall. So smooth it onto the tile then use the grooved side of the trowel to add the grooves into the back of that before applying to the wall. Now use a level to check that that first tile is level. You will want to check the level of the tiles periodically throughout the job, just to make sure that everything is lining up nicely. You don't want to have the job finished and then step back and have a look and see that they're sloping in one direction. In between tiles and underneath them on the sink here, I'm adding some spaces. These are three mil spaces in between. Um, and obviously the grout will go in this gap when you're done. It's acceptable also to get five mil spaces. It's totally up to you and what you find looks best. Now that I've done all my full tiles, I need to do some cutting. So I'm going to measure the distance from the wall to the tile that's already on the wall. I'm gonna take away the three mil for the grout, which will go in between. I'm just marking the edge of the tile on both ends, the correct length. And then I'm going to step outside and use my tile cutter to cut the tiles. Now you can pick up a tile cutter at most good hardware stores. This one was less than $50. Um, and for a small job where I'm only needing to cut about eight tiles, it does the job quite well. 
They're pretty easy to use. So what I'm doing right now is just lining up where I've marked the tile to be cut with a central line in the tile cutter. You use the handle on top, there's a little wheel underneath. I'm just moving that to the edge of my tile and pressing down firmly on the handle and then dragging that down across the width of the tile and scoring the tile. Once the tile has been scored, you can pop the plate back on top and give the handle a bit of a tap and it should nice and evenly break the tile on each side. So I also got myself some pre-made grout. They were about $11 a bottle. Again, yes, you could make this yourself with the grout powder and water, but for such a small job, why go to the trouble? And this one you can squeeze right into those joins. So squeeze it in and smooth it out. Um, for some joins you'll find that you do need to add more and push it down into that join, just as you would if you were grouting in another way. Um, and I let it set for a few hours, I came back and checked on it and where there were some gaps that showed up I added some more grout. So once you've finished grouting, you can go along and just scrape off the excess, get a damp sponge and wipe the tiles down and then let it dry. The final step for me is that I need to silicone where my tiles are joining my bench. This is a laundry, so it's a wet area. So I'm going to silicone all the way around the bench and the sink. I'm also doing the join where the two parts of wall join together with silicone. Um, just if there's any expansion or anything, then the silicone has a bit of flex in it for that reason there. And there you go, you're done. Nowhere near as hard as you thought it might be. Once the silicone and the grout is all dry, you're good to use your area as per normal.